Hi friends, bonjour, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this capsule summer wardrobe video Megathon 3000. This video is going to be a breakdown of exactly where my summer wardrobe is starting from. We're going to go through a breakdown of the color scheme, all of my proof of concepts, everything in my summer wardrobe, then a breakdown of what I want to add throughout the season, as well as an outfit calendar which is the first time i'm ever going to include one of these in my videos so i'm so excited about that and so the first thing we're going to go through is a breakdown of my summer color palette and this is actually my first year making a season specific color palette i usually go with the same color palette all year but that color palette is really highly influenced by the fact that i prefer to dress in fall and winter so i've really been doing myself a disservice with having a bunch of colors in here that I don't necessarily really like wearing in summer so I have been working on my summer palette and I'm going to share it with you this is my regular all-year color palette uh, it's these colors and then there is a bright orange and a camel as accent colors and I really got rid of quite a few of them primarily the darker colors and the color scheme that you're seeing here consists of only the colors that I already own something in because I can definitely see like you might notice that the the darker stone is out from the summer color scheme but i can definitely see myself adding it to my summer scheme later on if i do come across a piece of clothing that um, fits very well in with the summer palette but what it consists of right now is it only consists of colors I already have in my wardrobe so since I don't have anything in for example a dark brown or the darker beige I didn't include it in my palette in the past with the older scheme I have found myself adding colors I would want to try out to the palette but there's really no point in doing so unless I make that plunge so these are the base colors of my summer color palette and aside from that I do have three accent colors as well both are pale pastel colors one is a yellow and one is orange and then on top of that i do also have like a bright and vibrant orange as well but i decided to include these uh, as accent colors only because i really don't have many things in these colors and so like i mentioned i definitely by far got rid of most of the darker colors and this is just because i personally feel like uh, darker colors can be a little bit harsher in summer and i also appreciate the darker version of a lot of colors i have the charcoal gray i have the navy I have the dark-ish brown and then I also have a, a Bordeaux or a maroon. They are all really beautiful colors but I don't believe that I need them around the year and should one of them make their way as accent pieces that's okay but I will be focusing on the lighter colors because I feel like those are the ones that works for me and that I am drawn to throughout the summer just historically when I have been looking back. And so even though I kept black, which is just, I just have too many black things. I don't want to get rid of black. I am actually partly going to swap black for something else. When my wardrobe was very minimal, I made a pledge to only add backs and shoes in black. And that has worked very well for me in fall and winter. But for summer, I really have found that it's a really harsh balance. It doesn't work as well for me. I will from now on swap black for camel as my accessory color. This is a proof concept that is prefaced by me owning my camel handbag from Poulin. I did add it in a colder season, so I wore it in the cold season. It's just a much softer look, and so I'll be adding shoes and bags in this color instead. My entire wardrobe is based on cool toned, usually cool colors, but also cool toned versions of warmer colors, if ever. So except for the camel, which is warm, the other originally warm colors within my wardrobe, I do add in their cool version versions. So the next thing I want to touch on is my proof of concepts. If you are curating a wardrobe currently and you're struggling a little bit with doing so, I really recommend that you sit down and make sense of the things that you already like to wear and actually get wear out of and why that might be. And as you're expanding on your wardrobe, you might be better served actually adding more of these things rather than trying to experimenting with what else you like. And my proof of concepts. First of all, I think partly it's like an overall silhouette. Anything that is like an A-line cinched in at the waist or slip 
silhouette generally is what works best for me like these are the things that I feel comfortable wearing when they give me this silhouette and on top what I like to wear proof of concept wise is cami tops fitted tops so generally something that is fitted entirely on top then button downs these can generally be a lot looser I will usually stuff them into like my skirt or my pants and then it will give that cinched in look anyway then I will usually appreciate wearing something that is either a v-neck or a square neck then I also like a halter neck for a lot of the time usually if it's kind of like a square halter neck like I'm wearing right now and off the shoulder things again I appreciate a cinched in look but the tops may also be cropped given I am wearing something very fitting and very high-waisted on the bottom then the next on my proof of concept list is bottoms Bottoms is what I struggle the most with in summer. For some reason, it's just one of those things that I have like such a hard time enjoying for the most part. Actually, I have a lot of proof of concepts of what not to wear. So it's not because I haven't tried out things, it's that most things on the bottom I really just do not like. But the things that I do like and that I will buy for is high-waisted everything. Then my strong proof of concepts are A-line skirts and wrap skirts, just nothing too many. Then culotte pants, very high-waisted, very wide-legged pants. Flowy, preferably nothing too stiff, like it can be, but flowy is definitely preferred. And they can both be angle length or cut me off somewhere at the shin, both I like and don't mind. That's it for bottoms. Then for dresses, I have wrap dresses, slip dresses, any sort of like A-line dress that is more fitted at the top. So basically like the silhouette I explained earlier, but in some sort of like dress version. And this is sort of interesting because here comes the first exception. I always like to say that even though you have all of your rules and your proof of concept, sometimes you will probably have to make an exception or would like to make an exception. And for me, that is, for example, a beach baby doll dress. It's short, but not too short, but it's definitely not cinched in at the waist. But on the other hand, it is in my favorite colors, my favorite patterns. I really think it is so beautiful, but probably most of all, as someone who isn't too into the sun, it is something that is really easy to throw on. It protects my shoulders and protects my back. So that is my exception. Then for jackets, I won't be wearing many jackets in summer because it's just so hot, but I will most definitely be wearing blazers. It's actually the only proof of concept that I rode and that's because I absolutely love a blazer. I don't really think I'll be wearing much else. Like I could probably add a denim jacket to this list, but I don't think that I will have much need in adding that to my wardrobe this year, seeing as I love blazers so much. But these are my proof of concepts for styles. Then there are other proof of concepts such as fabrics. I am a polyester hater and although I still have polyester pieces in my wardrobe, when it comes to summer I have to keep that to an absolute minimum. Polyester does a really crappy job at keeping you warm in the cold seasons and also to keep you cool in the heat. The heat traps within the fabric and also it develops a terrible odor when you sweat in it. In general just like best to avoid polyester as much as you can. It's also not as great for the environment, it's not biodegradable. So what I usually usually like to go for is cotton, cupro, viscose, then also linen. Linen, of course, is the holy grail summer fabric. I do find, of course, linen is very crinkly. So if that is something you also struggle to accept, I have really found personally that the pieces I now have, which are linen, but then cut with another fabric, usually makes the linen like fall much more. It really creases and folds less, but it feels just as breathable to me. I love that. So that is something I'm going to keep in mind as a proof of concept also going forward. And now on to everything in my summer wardrobe. First, we'll get into all of my jackets. I have four jackets, all are blazers and None of them are that summer friendly. One of them is this one. It's a secondhand scotch and soda find and 
I do absolutely adore it, but it is a polyester and also it's quite heavy. Still, I know that I am going to be wearing it, both because I love the look, but also I don't have many alternatives. Then I also included my secondhand Jill Sandra blazer in the summer wardrobe. It's also a little bit heavy for a summer situation, but since it is made of cupro and wool, it is highly breathable and it also is just really easy to take care of. So when I do sweat in it, it's a pretty easy fix. Then I have two relatively new H&M blazers. The first one I added is this pink one and the color is absolutely stunning. The outside of it is viscose, but unfortunately the lining is polyester and on my latest wardrobe update I got a comment from someone who mentioned that she doesn't particularly like the new blazers because they are obvious fast fashion pieces and I gotta say I completely agree with that statement whenever I do pop this on I definitely feel like I am wearing an H&M blazer but that's fine I will get as much wear out of it as possible I'll try to style it in the ways least offensive to my own eye but I do absolutely adore this color for a blazer and I could definitely see myself adding something more permanent and high-end down the road. Then I have the orange blazer, somewhat the exact same story. This is single-breasted and yes, I agree, it's still a giveaway that it's H&M, but I do think that this one is a lot better looking. Like the other one is like a classic H&M situation where this is yeah a little bit more classy in the structure. But again, here we are working with polyester, which as you know, for summer, really not the best fit. You don't really breathe through it, but also it really collects an odor. But I am going to also get wear out of this. This is a great example of where I would like to add something else, but we're going to get to that later in the video. Then I have also this polyester dress. This is quite a couple of seasons old now. It is very preppy. It's definitely very dressy. I can dress it a little bit down and I have on occasion, but find myself not really wanting to do so anymore, but it is just a staple of my wardrobe. And even if it doesn't get much wear, I doubt that I will ever see this go anywhere. Then another dress that is a little bit more dressy is my Ghani dress. This is something that breaks the silhouette I was talking about in my proof of concepts because it isn't tight fitted at the upper body. And I absolutely love so many things about this dress. It's viscose, the color is beautiful, the pattern is really beautiful. I feel like it fits in so well with my style. And so I'm planning on sometimes this year taking it to a tailor and talking with him about what we can do about um, turning it into a dress more fitted for me. Then I have this new linen with Lyosil halter neck dress from Stories. Again, this is new, but I have already worn it quite a few times and I'm just so in love with it. It's so easy. I'm actually on purpose now trying not to wear it too much because I don't want to get tired of it. Like it's really magical and I really want to keep it that way. It's so easy to wear. I don't have to wear a bra with it. It is double lined across the chest and this is also still available on their website. So there will be a link to this. Like I talked about in the proof of concepts regarding fabric, this one is a cut. So even though it is quite a high percentage of linen, it just doesn't crease at all. It wrinkles itself out just by hanging and it's still super lightweight. Then I have my Kubro slip dress also from Stories. This is last season. This is more of a practical wear. I'm not offended by the look of it, but it's also not my favorite, but still I got so much wear out of this last year just because how comfortable and easy it is. Then a silk slip dress from the Etsy store I'm always raving about. Stunning great quality. I mostly wear it for going out in the summer, but I do also wear it every so often on like regular days. So also happy to have this, especially the collar. Then my Ghani slip dress with the orange petals. This I also historically will wear so much in summer, or at least I did last year. Then I have this 100% linen baby doll dress from a local Zurich brand. They make a ton of tailor-made things, but then they also make some ready-to-wear things, and this was one of them. Just really high quality. It is a 100% linen, but it is just so soft already, and it was from the very beginning, so it really does not crinkle a lot. Like, I literally haven't steamed it. I've worn it, like, a couple of times since its last wash, and this is just what it looks like. Beautiful structure, wonderfully made. The sleeves protect me from the sun and this is one of the few exceptions I have to my proof of concept because obviously this is not cinched in at the waist. It is cut at the waist so that might help a little bit with the illusion but other than that not really. 
but I still love it so much. And as someone who struggles kind of with the heat in summer, this is just perfect to throw on and uh, go to the lake, stuff like that. Then I have a blouse. This is pre-YouTube times, so this is 100% polyester. This is H&M. I actually thought I had the clutter of this, but turned out it was in the basement of my previous flat. So I was actually quite excited to see it. And again, it is polyester and it's not very comfortable, but it is as of right now the only bright yellow thing that I have. It is very cleavagey, but still it is really beautiful and I might wear this in the summer, we will see. Then we're getting into my button ups and first I want to address that my Gap linen shirt is missing from the rack. And that is because over time it had accumulated a few holes and tears in it. So it's at the tailor and couldn't make it into this video. And the next one is the one that I am wearing right now. It's 100% linen, but it is from Mango. I bought it when I saw it because I am in love with the pattern, but the construction of this shirt is just so bad. All of my other linen things I get by by just steaming them and I definitely prefer just having to do this. But for this shirt, I do have to iron it because it crinkles so badly. I'm going to get into more details in my fast fashion comparison video, but it just it does not look great. I just ironed it, so that's why it looks so great right now, but it really goes so fast. So I really find myself never ever wearing it, which is such a shame because I absolutely love the look of it. And the second I find something comparable, I will snatch it right up. Another 100% linen shirt. This one is new-ish from Everlane. And that's just a completely other story. The construction of this shirt is just gorgeous. I just washed it, gave it a steam and have worn it twice since and this is what it looks like. Like it doesn't crease in the same way that for example this one does. I mean it is new but still the overall construction just looks so nice doing its own thing. It's still quite stiff but obviously it's going to get much softer with wash. Then I have this new cotton thing from Zara. This is just from the fact that I am absolutely obsessed with blue and white stripes. It's pretty new. You can definitely tell already compared to some of the other cotton things that I have that the quality is not necessarily as great which of course makes a lot of sense but still the fabric is quite light so I'm going to be wearing this uh, for as long as I can. Then we have the only cotton button up in my wardrobe as of right now. This is an all year round piece. At this point I have a few pieces from Ralph Lauren and they are just so great. Like I really appreciate everything about the Ralph Lauren shirts that I have and this is no different. I don't know if that's a coincidence but I really found that I've had a much easier time keeping this white than some of the shirts I've had in the past. The fabric is extremely light and soft. It does crease a little bit because it is very thin cotton but it's really not a lot and a very very quick steam will do the trick when that happens. Then two almost identical tops. One is a reformation, one is Abercrombie. I really love this look and I just added this one so it's going to be interesting to see if I'll wear my reformation one. I love wearing this in the colder seasons. Usually I'll pop a blazer on top of it and I'll go out like that. But since I am very squeezed into it, I do get like some boob sweat when it's too warm. And so that is actually why I added this because I absolutely love the look and it doesn't really happen, but I still can go without a bra in it. Then this is brand new. You haven't even seen it in a wardrobe updates yet. It is a halter-ish neck crop top from H&M. This is such a beautiful look, especially with the pants I'm about to show you very soon. I really appreciate the fact that it is cropped and this is 100% cotton, by the way. Then my silk came from Intimacy. Not much to say about this very easy throw on and definitely also something I'm likely to wear a lot throughout the summer. Then I have this gorgeous top from a reformation. This is also fully linen but actually the linen is quite thick and again I'm pretty squeezed into it so it's actually not always super comfortable when it is really really hot and that is kind of a shame because Otherwise, I would be wearing this all the time, but it does get occasional wear. Then a few more basic tops. This new one also from H&M. I think it's good to have. It is a basic piece, but it really remains to be seen how much I'm actually going to wear it because there are other things I would rather wear that are a little bit less basic, or if not less basic, they're 
just more my type of basics. Then this is the top version of the Cooper dress I have from another stories. So comfortable, super light and flowy. Not the most interesting piece that I have, but again, this is also something that I occasionally will wear. Then I have this linen thing from Everlane and I almost didn't include it. I'm not sure that I will be wearing this much. The quality is really nice, but the linen is quite thick and I don't always think it sits so nicely when I tuck it into something, which is exclusively how I like to wear my button downs. It also has t-shirt sleeves, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but that's not really the issue. Whenever I try to wear this, I would rather wear my long sleeved ones. So I'm kind of in a dilemma because it feels ridiculous to let go of something that is so inoffensive and nice. But again, I just have other things I reach for over it. So what's the point? Still, I'm going to let it be part of my wardrobe for this season and then we'll see how that goes. Then I added two new pairs of pants and you haven't seen these ones either they also didn't make it into the last wardrobe update and they are identical well, i'll start with the white ones because they're my favorites these are h&m they are linen cut with viscose so again they fall quite beautifully sorry it's this way i have worn them quite a bit already but i have hand washed them so far because i absolutely do not want to see them deteriorate this is one of my oldest proof of concepts actually paints like these i just forgot for a really long time but I tried them on in store, they're super high-waisted and I just feel so comfortable in them and find that they flatter my look very much. They are very see-through. You can't tell with completely nude underwear, that looks fine, but it's absolutely impossible to tuck something into these pants. So that is, for example, hence the crop top, which is already an outfit I've worn multiple times. Then I have the same pair in black. They're just as lovely and I am very glad to have them. They're sort of like a summer version of a dress pant, but I do definitely definitely think I will wear them less just because they are black and again that's like a harsher look for summer. Then I have my hot pink skirt from Another Stories. This is something I know for a fact that I would be wearing a lot if we were in the colder seasons. I'm very confident in my vibrant colors in the colder seasons and when I say vibrant colors I basically just mean hot pink. But I tend to feel more comfortable in my much lighter colors in summer and so I'm not sure exactly how much wear this is going to get. Anyway, it's still definitely going to be a part of my summer wardrobe. Then I feel like I have two different versions of the same skirt. The first one is my silk mini skirt. This is also from the Etsy brand. They custom made the length for me and I am just so in love with it. This cool toned old color is definitely uh, gonna be a neutral for me all throughout the summer. I really appreciate this color and I really appreciate this fabric. It's just so beautiful. The only thing that is with it, and I've mentioned this before, is that since it is such a thin and flowy fabric, there really are some things I can't really wear with it because when I try to tuck it into the skirt, it just looks a little bit off. It doesn't look super polished in my opinion. And that is actually where this skirt comes in. This is also new from another story. This was in the last wardrobe updates. This is an A-line mini skirt, but still long enough that it's not like too mini for my liking. Super casual, super beautiful. This is definitely something I have to steam every time I pop it back on, which I think makes a lot of sense. Like when you sit down and get back up, pieces like this do tend to crinkle. And of course it looks better when it's completely polished, but I have found that when it starts crinkling a little bit, that's okay, it doesn't really bother me. And it has this like cotton lining inside of it. And just because of the structure of the skirt, I can tuck anything into it and it looks pretty good. And since I don't have a lot of buttons and just in general struggle with buttons, I really think that this is going to be the holy grail of buttons for me for this season. Also seeing as this color is both light, airy and appropriate for summer, but also works with literally every color in my wardrobe. That's all my summer pieces and most of my winter things are going into my basement but I am keeping a few sweaters around just in case I need to bring like a sweater with me somewhere and for a couple of seasons I've been adding shoes and bags only in black. I have found that it's not my look for summer again it is just too harsh and so the bags that I have and will be wearing are first of all my Ansua tote bag. This is from a good old Zurich brand. If you're Swiss watching this, you definitely know this brand. This is actually almost at one francs per wear. I've worn it almost 130 times. It just holds up so well and I absolutely just adore it for me. It's just the perfect combination between casual and still kind of chic. Really love that one. Then next up is my handbag from Poulin in a camel color. I just 
wear it all the time. I absolutely love it. And I think it goes so beautifully with my summer wardrobe and the lighter colored pieces. And even for then the black pieces, it just kind of softens the entire look a little bit. So I really do love this bag. And then already my last bag for summer is this fast fashion bag. It's a Sarah bag. It is a canvas bag with camel details. It's not perfect. It definitely needs a little bit help sometimes keeping its shape. Up close, it definitely is sort of like a giveaway that it's not the best quality. But as I mentioned when I bought this bag, I am going to not treat it with that much respect. It is going to be like my by the lake bags. I'll be carrying sunscreen and wet towels, wet bathing suits, stuff like that. So I'm expecting this to get quite dirty and that is totally fine. And again, I think the colors are just so appropriate for the entire thing I've got going. And next up are shoes. I was never huge on shoes, so I never accumulated a, a lot of them. When I first committed to minimalism, I also decided to only wear shoes and bags in black. And it's only through owning these things in summer that I could see that having these things in black are just, it's too hard for summer. So that is something I'm going to change going forward. But as of right now, these are the shoes that I have. First, I have my Birkenstocks. These are just totally regular black suede Birkenstocks. I do wear them quite a lot, of course, because they are super comfortable. They're not the most classy look in my opinion, but they also do not have to be. And so the next thing I have in sandals that are definitely more classic are my eight sandal. These are strappy sandal and they are surprisingly comfortable. I feel like overall they have a pretty good reputation for making sturdy and comfortable shoes. And these sandals are definitely that. Obviously looking back, I would wish that I had bought them in another color, but these I am also going to, of course, continue to wear. Then I have another pair of Birkenstock-ish sandals. These are from a brand called Mobilis or something like that. Honestly, just bought them because I need something that I can really walk far in in summer. Again, I wish these weren't black, but these will also get wear when need be. Then I have a white high top Converse as a sneaker. I prefer to wear sandals throughout the summer, but having these Canvas sneakers will also do sometimes. Then I also included my eight ballerinas, but truth be told, I'm not sure how much wear I'm gonna get out of these. I feel like they are more a spring and fall shoe. When it's this warm, I'm not sure that they're going to be that comfortable, but I still included them. And again, for summer, it's a little bit unfortunate that they are black, because other than that, I think that they are just so chic and I love them in the colder seasons. Then I have another black pair of shoes, my tall heeled sandals from a Vagabond. These only have straps in the front, but you would be surprised how far I can walk in these and how fast. They're actually quite comfortable and they're probably the chicest look that I have to a certain extent that I'm also actually able to, to walk pretty far in. So the next pair of shoes that I have are also the last. They are my new mules from Flattered. They're also my first ever mules, so it wasn't until I got these that I realized that walking far and fast in mules is not really possible. We had like a talk about this on my Instagram and most of you agreed. So I'm probably not gonna wear them as much as I thought I would. And that is such a shame because they are really comfortable. I just can't walk very fast in them. But they are my first camel shoe and I'm dedicated to camel for summer and I think that they are just so gorgeous. I really think they elevate all of my summer looks. So it's really a, a little bit of a, a shame that I won't just be able to toss these on and wear them all day. But at least there's a proof of concept there that Camel is actually working for me. Then we are going to move straight on to an outfit calendar. This is the first time I've ever doing this in a video, but I think it is such a clever way to make sure that you can get the most out of your wardrobe. And basically what I did is that I made a calendar of just two weeks, so 14 days. And then I fit in all the days with outfits that I would actually wear based on what I believe, but also based on history. I'm just going to make the basic outfit. I excluded bag, shoes, and jackets, and it's simply because that's not really the point. I will always find something of that to throw in with the outfit. It's more looking at the actual pieces that I will wear and how much. So it's not set for the specific days like that. I just threw it randomly in. But for example, I am expecting out of 14 days, I am likely to wear my baby doll dress around four times. Maybe a little bit less sometimes, maybe a little bit more, but this is just taking an actual practical look at how I might fill out 
my weeks without fits. And the baby doll dress will probably be worn this much because A, it's easy, two, it's comfortable, three, it's such an easy throw over to when I go to the lake, which uh, I do do quite a lot. So I think it's, it's safe to say that this one will probably take up um, quite a bit of space in an outfit calendar of two weeks. Then I have another outfit formula in here that I'm also expecting to wear four times over two weeks and it is my A-line mini skirt. Here I'm only imagining the linen skirt to be the one that I would wear in this outfit combo. But the beauty is that I don't have to wear the same button up for this every time. I have a few I like to wear. Of course, there's the white linen one. Then there is the Ralph Lauren white one. I have a the blue one from Eveline. And just in general, button ups are probably something that I'm going to expand on. Again, it's a really strong proof of concept. So even though it's the same outfit four times, there are room for changes in here. And again, it's something that I'm likely to wear because I just do feel so comfortable in it and I like the way it looks throughout the entire day. Then I threw in my halter neck dress from Stories twice. This is another really easy look. It is a black dress so I think if I wear it much more than this I would get really tired of it but it is such a beautiful silhouette. It really does suit me so well and also with the, the fabric composition like we talked about it just stays good looking throughout the entire time that I will wear it. So I'm also assuming that I could wear this once a week without getting tired of it. And then another thing I also put in twice is the linen pants with this crop top actually. This is a completely new outfit for me but I think that it is absolutely stunning and I think wearing pants once a week is not a bad guess. Like that is probably something I could see myself doing. I do prefer skirts and dresses, but sometimes it's nice to wear a pant. And these pants with a crop top is definitely the one I prefer the most. And then with some sort of blazer on top of it in the evening, it looks really nice. Then a couple of outfits I threw in here. I put them on Friday, but that doesn't really matter. It's more to say that these are going out outfit. These are probably the outfits that I'm likely to reach for. And one of them is the pink slip dress. This one, with especially like my striped navy blazer. It just looks so chic. I really love that combo. So that's something I'm expecting to also wear throughout the summer ever so often. And then after that, I have like a fitted top on top with the silk skirt. The silk skirt, because it's mini and I don't know for some reason, it just doesn't have the same daily wear look to me that the linen one does. So I'm just expecting to wear it a little bit less and then with a top like this. And then again, usually like a blazer on top sort of adds to like the the dressed up look, which makes a lot of sense because in the evening it usually makes a lot of sense to throw on some type of jacket. And so this is like a full outfit calendar, like a, a realistic version of how I might actually wear my outfits throughout summer. And there's a lot of repetition, but that's just because for, for the things that I have, these are the things that are comfortable and I will usually wear the things that I feel comfortable in in every way more than I will reach for less uh, comfy versions. But still, even though they're not part of the outfit calendar, there are definitely other outfits I have that I think I would be likely to swap in every once in a while. One of them is just like the Kupro dress from Stories, the, the other version. Then I also have, of course, the Ghani slip dress for usually like a night out on the town, but I don't wanna wear the pink one. Then I also could imagine wearing like some sort of crop top with the pink slip skirt. And then another look I think I'm very likely to wear every once in a while. I didn't include it in the calendar, but I'm likely to swap it in sometimes, I think. And that is the pink slip skirt with the oat cami top. I actually haven't worn this yet, but I have tried it on a couple of times at home and I just think that it is absolutely stunning. Obviously, it's a little more in your face because there is this vibrant color to it, which is also why Again, I didn't put it on the, the calendar because I don't know that it will become a stable like that. But I also think that that's an absolute gorgeous look. And sort of this entire calendar and everything else we've been talking about takes me to my wishes for summer or if not wishes, then just the things that I am planning to add or that I could see myself adding. And one thing is more white tops, preferably crop tops and fitted tops. Of course, the type of tops fit in well with 
a few of the looks here. But the thing is, as of right now, I only really have those types of tops in black. I do have a white summer top that is the one from Reformation. But again, because even though it's linen, it's so thick, you really get to like sense that you're wearing a lot of fabric. And when it is at its warmest, it's not the most comfortable. And that's really a shame because it is such a cute, summer top look wise then i think i'm likely to add a few more skirts they do have to be perfectly wearable like the linen one from another stories they cannot in under any circumstances have like some sort of things to it that makes me not want to wear it so don't be surprised if i add a few more skirts but slowly as i'm looking for something that is wearable then i could definitely see myself add one more slip dress i would love to add one more actually from the same brand as the other one they get new fabrics and new colors every so often and for quite a while i've been waiting for something in a baby blue that is the next slip dress i would like to add so once they come around with a baby blue fabric i am definitely going there i know that it would be possible to look for a, a baby blue silk dress elsewhere but i have kind of looked elsewhere and i just keep coming back to the fact that i would rather wait for serenity silkwear to maybe get that fabric back not saying 100 percent i'm going to do that like if i really do find something comparable and not way more pricey than that then i might go ahead and add something then i also wrote in general summer dresses i feel like dresses also have to be perfect last year i ended up adding a few dresses that ended up being mistakes so this is another thing i really have to go slowly about i would love to have more summer dresses but they would also have to be perfect or just won't wear them then i could definitely see myself adding a few more button-ups just to have something more to alternate between because it is such a strong proof of concept both in summer and in winter i would like to add something in pink and whatever else like colors or patterns makes sense then i absolutely feel like my wardrobe needs a linen blazer i love my blazers but None of these are super summer friendly. I want something high quality. I've already tried on a couple of them. They make a lot of them in these like standard brands that we usually also talk about on my channel, but a lot of the times they're cut with polyester or just the cut is very trendy. I don't know. I found a lot of options, but for some reasons, none that I really like. So I'm looking for something preferably in a light stone, um, but the color is a little bit up to interpretation. Like it can go a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. I just need to find something gorgeous high-end wearable and I just I just need something in that category and I'm willing to bend on a few things to add it. Then I'm going to be looking also for shoes in lighter colors. I might add a brighter pair of Birkenstocks or a lighter pair of sandals. I would like to have like a block heel sandals in a, in a lighter color as well just whenever if ever I feel like we're, uh, adding summer shoes, I, I will probably be adding that this season. It just has to be light, like either some sort of like oat color or um, the, the camel. And so this year when I add something for summer, I'm really going to be paying attention to fabrics. And here I don't just mean what fabrics they are, like linen, cotton. I really mean also like how comfortable the fabric is in other certain ways like does it crease in certain areas itch in certain areas like is it too thick some ways like for example again is the reformation top i keep coming back to because that is such a beautiful top and just for the look of it i would wear it couple of times a week but I'm just not comfortable when it's too warm and that is such a shame for now I just hope that you enjoyed this very extensive video on where my summer wardrobe is starting from if you like this video please give it a like so that I know and if you're not already subscribed consider doing that because I would love to keep you around and I will see you in the next video